everybody, Mike McWilliams upstairs to the right music. Uh, on today's show, uh, we're going to do a three-parter. Uh, we're going to compare the Greco guitars that were produced in the 1970s uh, compared to a modern Epiphone. Uh, if we did it all at once, this would be way too long, and uh, my algorithms tell me that you guys usually drop out after eight minutes, so <laughs> I'm going to try to break this down into three parts, condense uh, even these parts within themselves down. In part one, uh, let's talk about the Greco guitars. Uh, as you know, these Greco guitars were produced uh, in Matsumoto, Japan uh, from the late 1960s uh, and in this current production, or uh, not current, but in this, this production model uh, lasted until the early 1980s, around 1985 or so. And then they picked up again in the 90s, but they began to produce them in Korea. But for the Japanese made models, uh, such as this one right here, this is a EG450 uh, standard. So this is a copy of a Les Paul standard. Um, they really uh, went all out in order to try to replicate an actual Les Paul standard. Now there's a lot of features on this uh, guitar that we're going to talk about today that really uh, make it uh, good in some regards in terms of its build quality, not so good in others when you compare it up to that Epiphone, but we'll talk to that in part two. Uh, so these guitars are really super interesting and the fact that, let's just start with the pickups. Uh, we've talked about this a few times on this channel about these Maxon pickups. I found out something in researching today's show that I did not know that really surprised me about this particular guitar. Um, if you look here on the back, I'll tell you what, we'll just do a zoom in on that. It's a lot easier, a lot less messier, because <laughs> I know this is not going to focus very well. So let's start off with the pickups. Uh, these pickups are Maxon pickups, and we've talked about this before on the show, but I found out something about the pickups in this guitar that I did not know. I was under the assumption that these were UD pickups. Now UD pickups are really hot, relatively hot ceramic pickups that Maxon produced. Um, I'm quite sure that they are uh, in the, uh, this one would be in the eight, plus range, this one in the high 7s, 7.9 or so. So these are relatively hot pickups, uh, but I thought that they were UD pickups. Uh, upon a little research, I found out that actually UD pickups didn't go into any of their standard models until 1979. The pickups that were put into these models from the mid-70s until 79 were U1000 pickups. Now, Maxon produced pickups for a lot of different companies. Another company that they were producing pickups for was Ibanez. And they were the same pickups, they were just labeled differently. The U1000 pickups in the Ibanez uh, guitar would be called the Super 70 pickup. So if you know a little Van Halen lore, you'll know that it was the Maxon Super 70 that was used uh, in his guitar. That was the humbucker that he pulled out of a, an Ibanez guitar and stuck into his own Frankenstein guitar to record Van Halen 1. So these are the same pickups as the U1000s or the, or the same pickups as the Super 70. So this guitar comes equipped 
with uh, that legendary Super 70 pickup in it. That's something I did not know. Uh, that is actually really something. <laughs> So this is a U1000 pickup or Super 70. So that was really something to me. Uh, I, I knew that these pickups sounded fantastic, uh, but I had no idea that I actually owned uh, these Super 70s. Um, so moving on, uh, these guitars are actually chambered, so these are not solid uh, guitars at all. So that's something that you might want to take in consideration when you're looking at a modern Epiphone. Most of the modern Epiphone lines are actually solid pieces of mahogany, pieces, multiple pieces that they use a veneer to cover that over, but it is solid mahogany with a maple cap and a maple veneer. Uh, this is base wood. Uh, you can tell that here in some of the, the road damage that's been done here. You can see where the base wood is showing. So no, this is not a mahogany body. This is base wood um, with, I believe, a maple uh, cap uh, hollowed out and then a maple veneer on top of that. So uh, the neck is definitely uh, a, a mahogany neck. So you do have that going forward. Uh, the fretboard um, is uh, not Indian laurel like you would find on an Epiphone. Uh, so you got that going there. It's really rosewood. Um, there's some pluses and minuses like I said. But for the value, uh, if you can track down one of these uh, 70s, especially the uh, 450, uh, the 700, and, uh, and 800, those are all models stepping up in this line, the S line. Uh, you wouldn't be doing yourself too bad because those are, as they go up, the pickups improve. Uh, you start getting those features that you would get in an Epiphone, uh, like a solid uh, maple uh, cap as opposed to a hollowed out maple body with base wood with a mahogany uh, body to it. So uh, that's when you get into the EG 800s, 1200s. Uh, when you're talking about the EG uh, 450s like this, uh, it's basically uh, a hollowed out guitar, but man, this thing uh, from 44 years old is a tone monster. Uh, on the back here, uh, they give you pretty much, well, a good 1970s uh, replica of uh, Grover tuners. Uh, they're not the greatest. Uh, if I was going to do any modding or any changes to this guitar, uh, that would be one of the first things that I would change because some of the tuning issues that I'm getting, uh, staying in tune with the guitar, I think that are because of that, possibly the nut. The nut needs replacement, but because this guitar has standed the test of time for 44 years, I've decided I'm never going to touch it. I'm basically going to have maybe uh, a little bit of a checkup on it from now and then, but to be honest with you, out of the box this thing rocks. It still does uh, 40 plus years. Uh, it made it this far without anybody mucking it up and I'm not going to be the one to, <laughs> you know. being a, a hollowed out guitar that it has some such a fantastic uh, sound to it is because it actually has a true ABR bridge and uh, you can see where that bridge actually goes directly into the body uh, as opposed to on the Epiphones and the Gibsons as well uh, outside the custom shop it sits inside of post. Uh, so that's one of the accurate features that uh, the guys at uh, Greco in the 70s got right. Also, you notice that the pickup uh, uh, rings are accurate as well. They actually
actually go up to the height of the pickups, whereas on the Epiphone uh, 59 model, it does not. If you want to get that true uh, 59 aspect of it, Gibson aspect of it, you'll have to border parts and do that yourself. So there are a lot of things about this guitar that they got right. Uh, it's got the thumb bleeders, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, the tapering on the the uh, the uh, pots on this thing is fantastic. I'm getting as smooth of a tapering on the pots out of this 40 plus year old guitar that I'm getting out of my 59 Epiphone or frankly out of uh, my Gibson uh, Les Paul standards uh, that I've owned. Uh, so whatever they did in terms of wiring with this guitar, they got it right. You don't need to make any changes to the pickup of the wiring. The switch, um, after 40 years, is just rock on solid. Uh, actually, <laughs> better than one of the Gibsons that I had. Uh, one of my gold tops, I had to work on that. Uh, and that was a brand new guitar. Uh, but for the most part, for value for the money, you cannot go wrong. Uh, with these uh, Fujian uh, Greco uh, Les Paul copies. They're fantastic guitars, uh, well worth the money, and uh, something that uh, you can find online at Reverb, you can find them on eBay. Uh, if you look around, a lot of shops on the West Coast carry these because they can get them over from Japan pretty easily. Uh, yeah, so a value to look at. So in part two, what we're going to do is we're going to do a side-by-side uh, with my Epiphone 59 right now, uh, actually it's in the shop uh, getting uh, frets uh, polished on it and, and leveled out and actually getting a slight, slight rewiring to it. Uh, just a little bit of, of an improvement. And so what we'll do is in part two we'll do a side by side of both of these guitars. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like. I really live on subscriptions and uh, and it makes or breaks you here on YouTube. If you like the content that you're seeing, uh, hit that like button and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.